Okay guys, uh, today's video is going to be on fabricating and testing uh, shorted stubs. And uh, to start off with, I'm going to uh, show you what we're working with here. Here's a, uh, uh, it's a length of RG58 and I currently have it uh, shorted and capped off here. And I'm going to show you how to test it and then uh, how to adjust it in case you needed to uh, tune it to something else. So we're going to start off here with the, just the most simple setup uh, on our service monitor. We're in duplex generate mode with, uh, with no uh, offset. And we're going to be generating out of our gen port going straight through a T uh, connector here uh, into our antenna. Um, and we're going to use this and just get our, our reference level uh, so that we, uh, we know what we're working with here. And I can uh, go over into the uh, blow up the spectrum analyzer. And in this one here, if I uh, if I if I uh, scroll across the frequency here, um, you'll see I have uh, uh, the same signal level uh, coming in as uh, no matter where I'm scrolling across. Now I want to go ahead and install the. Um, the 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 tune stub here. I can tell you uh, that it's uh, it's tuned for 151. So what we're going to look for is we're going to look for a dip when we get to 151, um, and that's how we'll know it's working. So let's go ahead and get it connected up, um, and we'll have a sweep across and see what we got. So. There we are, and if I come over to my frequency control and I sweep through, I'll get a point to where I'll hit a bottom here uh, in level. And that is my resonant point, and that's where I'm tuned at. Um, here I'm getting about, it's, it's in the 151 area here. So if I crank it back up, I can see it go up. And if I come over here to our the megahertz division, you can see it. You can see it more rapidly here. You'll see it dive down, and then back up. So this is what we're looking for when we're looking for that notch. Um, this is uh, this is the spot we're looking for. So um, when we when we get to our notch, if we were um, uh, adjusting this and we got down and uh, um, we were still too too low a frequency. Let's say that we're trying to uh, we're trying to to cut this thing for exactly uh, 153 uh, megahertz. Um, since uh, you can only uh, uh, when you're cutting, you can only go uh, up in frequency, not down. If it's uh, if it's if it's below you your thing is already cut too short and you have to start over with a longer piece of coax but in this particular case we're uh, we're going to be looking for uh, the one the 153 and what I found is it's just uh, it's easiest to uh, take your your cutters when you're doing these adjustments and while you're doing the cut you can actually get to the sweet spot where you're shorting out the the center conductor and the shield, and then you can uh, adjust in real time to see what the new the new frequency is. So I'll show you on this one. I'll cut through until I see it change, and then I can come through. And there's a change. So now I can come through and use my adjustment here and go up and see where I'm now tuned at. So go up, 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 and back down. Okay, 154, uh, eight. So you can see how much I took off. That's about maybe a half, three quarters inch. I went from 151 to 154. So uh, when you're doing this tuning, you need to take really small little snippets when you get close to your target frequency. And then when you finally get to your target one, you want to um, uh, not not cut directly across on that one. When you get like what you would think was one step away, go ahead and cut it cut it off cleanly, and then come around 
and strip off your shield. Now you can get your center conductor. Pop it off. Now you can come back and do a proper short that you can take your soldering iron and solder it and put a nice little cap on it. So there you go. That's the uh, uh, the shorted half-way stub. Um, stand by and I'll go into uh, a little schematic and a theory of operation here. So stand by. Okay, let's take a look at how this, uh, this uh, stub is being used. Um, we have the stub here and it's connected uh, with a simple uh, T connector um, and like I said this is about a little more than two feet of uh, RG58 and it's uh, the end is shorted uh, together and what we're going to be using it for is we have um, a situation where we have our, our VRS antenna here and it's it needs to receive two signals uh, or actually it only needs to receive one signal, the portable, but it's going to receive the second signal, which is coming from the main radio. One of the signals, the main radio signal, it, it needs to get rid of. It needs to filter out because the receiver uh, does not want to, to uh, get bombarded by this very large signal. Because remember, the, the main radio is putting out 100 watts. So any antenna that's anywhere close to the uh, radiating antenna here will get swamped. So we're going to uh, use this, this uh, stub here as a filter so that as the signal comes into the antenna here and comes down the coax, it doesn't get to go past uh, this point here. And a lot of it gets... Uh, um, attenuated and um, uh, greatly before we're going to our receiver here so that's um, that's what we're using it for now let's take a look at um, how exactly it works um, when um, uh, when let me say that the a VRS antenna or any antenna works the same in receive as it does in transmit but just the reverse so we're, we're familiar with in the, in the transmit position, we have a coax cable uh, connecting to the antenna. This coax cable allows uh, electricity, the flow of electrons, on the, the center conductor in the shield to go back and forth along the radiating uh, uh, element here. And when that electricity goes back and forth, it... Um, produces the the RF energy that comes out of the uh, antenna. Um, well, when the antenna is in the receive mode, it's the same process but in reverse. So as the radio waves come and they cut across the radiating element here of our antenna, they induce uh, electricity now, the flow of electrons uh, back and forth on the uh, on our coaxial cable here and when the uh, the radio waves come and cross this what we're doing is we're essentially creating a 50 ohm signal generator here so uh, our inherent impedance of the generator is 50 ohms and our output impedance if we want to get maximum power transfer should be 50 ohms as well but we know that the output impedance here could be anything from a direct short to infinite resistance with an open. So it has to handle everything uh, in between. And what this uh, shortest stub is going to do for us is it's going to uh, allow for a specific range of frequencies, specifically the 151, that this will act like a short to it. So it won't be 50 ohms. So um, very little of the power will actually get past this point to go, to go into the receiver. Now let's take a look at how exactly the, the stub works. Um, when you get to the, the, when the, when the power comes across the antenna and the signal comes to the T connector here, 
uh, it divides 50-50, half coming down this way. Now imagine these are a line of cars and the trick is to get the cars to do a uh, half the cars to do a complete 180 and go back in the opposite direction so that they all have a head-on collision here and cancel each other out. Um, so what happens is, is as the signal gets here, it, uh, it goes 180 degrees out of phase or uh, shifts because this um, uh, uh, coax is 180 degrees uh, long. Um, it's actually, um, uh, if there's a thing called velocity factor and it's where the, it moves uh, faster in the uh, uh, cable than it does through the air. So you have to uh, keep that in mind for calculating the uh, length of this thing. But anyway, uh, it, it comes down here uh, and for 151 uh, frequency, it, it's a perfect fit where it'll come down, it'll go 180, it'll go 180 again for the short, and then another 180 will, uh, for the round trip, will make the signal when it gets to this point exactly 180 degrees out of phase with the, with the main one. And we can see an example with these two waveforms here. And when they're 180 degrees out of phase and you combine them, they essentially just wipe each other out uh, to zero. Uh, nothing's perfect on this. Some does leak through. And uh, in this particular case, on the 151 uh, frequency, uh, we'll, uh, with our 10 dB attenuator, we'll, we'll get all the way down to minus 38 dB uh, on the other side here. So that's, uh, that's greatly reduced uh, by a factor of thousands. Um, but this is the theory of how it works. Um, I like to use the shorted half wave uh, instead of the, uh, um, the open quarter wave simply because it gives my antenna out here um, uh, DC uh, continuity. Um, it, it basically um, it, it helps for what they call common mode. Uh, so not only is the antenna here getting radiated by the main one, but the coax as well, everything about this coming down is going to be getting radiated as well. So I like uh, using the shorted um, uh, stub method. It seems to uh, uh, quiet down what ends up going into the receiver uh, more than the uh, open. Plus, um, 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 you have to keep in mind that the, the, the main radio will um, uh, transmit on car to car or attack frequency on 151. So uh, that would uh, essentially get past the trap here and that's why I have the 10 dB attenuator on here just to give the receiver that much more protection. Um, and with the location of this not in line of sight with the main one so that we have uh, metal in between the VRS antenna and the main one, we can uh, uh, be totally uh, uh, rest assured that we're not going to damage our receiver by, uh, by uh, coupling power uh, into it from our uh, main transmitter. So um, anyway, uh, it's, it's, it's a very effective little thing. It's, uh, it, it only costs uh, the, the price of the connector and the little T adapter here. So it's, it's just for less than $10, you can um, um, have a, a really effective um, um, uh, notch filter, if you will, um, to make this uh, uh, receiver workable. But anyway, there's the uh, theory behind it and uh, hope that uh, helps out and we'll talk to you next time.